Today I'm joined by Fabrizio Romano to discuss how Tottenham pulled off the double signing of Gareth Bale and Sergio Regulon, how our pursuit of a striker led to the addition of Carlos Vinicius, and why moves from Milan Skriniar and Deli Ali didn't materialise this summer. I'm Matt Hayes and you're watching the Tottenham Fan Voice Podcast. Hello and welcome back to Matty's Tottenham blog and to the second episode of the Tottenham Fan Voice podcast. As you can see, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by the one and only Fabrizio Romani to talk all things Tottenham. Uh, Fabrizio, how are you? Hello, hello, hello. How are you? How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm so happy to be here with you. Thank you for the invitation. Thanks very much for coming on. It is a, an absolute pleasure to have you on here. Um, I'm sure I speak for, for all the fans and I have to thank you for your coverage of the, uh, the transfer, no, not just thank this you. summer, but in, in the last couple of years as well. Um, of course, it was a, a very busy summer for you. Has, have things died down in the last couple of days for you after the deadline? Yes, uh, it was a crazy summer. It was really so long and incredible transfer market just because it started like in June and it ended in October, so it was something new. And it was really difficult just because we have different. We had different moments. Like in June, it was a kind of transfer market. In July and August was really difficult because we had also the Champions League, the Europa League, so it was another word and talking about September it was crazy because day by day many things were happening so it was really particular but uh, but was good I am so so happy then I had some relaxing day immediately after but uh, now we are already thinking because also talking with some agents also today yesterday they told me okay let's take like one eight, one week two weeks uh, quiet relaxing with our family then we go on because November is, com- is coming and then in December the clubs really start to having talks and preparing January transfer market so in mm-hmm. some ways we will be back. <laughs> yeah it's a strange one that there's there's such a small gap between the two windows um, uh, this, this year but we get a, a bit more onto the, the main transfer window uh, but firstly I want to ask you about Gareth Bale uh, you know for, for Tottenham fans of course it is the, the biggest deal that we've had this summer it's one we've been waiting to see but we weren't you know we weren't fully sure this would ever get over the line but I suppose what, what I want to ask is how exactly did Tottenham manage to pull off this deal? It was really difficult, uh, to be honest, just because thinking about Gareth Bale moving on from Real Madrid was something new. And just because uh, on the last two or three years he had many problems with Zidane and same with the board of Real Madrid. But the main problem was that Real Madrid were ready to sell him, to loan him out, to, to let him go. And the problem was Gareth Bale, because Gareth himself didn't want to, to leave the club, always said they want to stay at Real Madrid. Also his agent, Jonathan Barnett, always said the player is staying, Gareth is okay with Real Madrid, also if he's not playing he wants to stay at Real Madrid. So this summer was something new because he had the opportunity to come back at Tottenham with Jose Mourinho pushing to, to get him. He always wanted him, as he said, also at Real Madrid. He wanted him and they signed him immediately after he was sacked by, by Real Madrid. So, so we have to say congrats, in my opinion, to Tottenham because they signed a fantastic player on loan. And this is something crazy in this crazy summer, as it happened, for example, for Luis Suarez, some free agent on, mm-hmm. with Thiago Alcantara for 25 million euros. So they had many fantastic deals but Gareth Bale is one of them for sure we are talking about the top player and it was really difficult for Tottenham to convince the player at the start but when he understood that there was the opportunity to come to his beloved club he immediately said yes so it was yeah. not easy at the start but immediately after also when they had some problems about his salary you know talking with Real Madrid about sharing his salary and more in this moment Tottenham understood that the player wanted to move and it was key to sign Gareth Bale because if they had also problems about his salary, about his idea of contract, about his future, now if you talk with people around Gareth Bale, they say he wants to stay also for the future. Now, obviously, he has to start now to play for Tottenham, okay, Mm -hmm. but he's not considering, okay, I'm here just for one year and then bye-bye, I come back to Real Madrid, I change again. He wants to stay. He sees Tottenham as the club, not just of his past or the present, but also for the future. So... Good luck to him because we need Gareth Bale back on the pitch playing football and not golf. Uh, yeah, it would be an absolute delight for, for all football fans, I suppose, to see him back on the pitch. Yeah. But, um, how, how exactly is that deal structured? Because we've seen, you know, of course, it's initial loan deal with, with an option for a second year. And then that, that's when his, his Real Madrid uh, contract expires. So is there any sort of clause there that Tottenham can make this permanent? Or would that come down to his decision when his contract at Real Madrid expires? Yes, they say 
now we do a simple launch. Uh, just a launch it was completely free from from the future of Garbale. But they said also with the agent, also with the player. On next summer, we will discuss with the priority to Tottenham. So if he's gonna have mm -hmm. a fantastic season with Tottenham, obviously, obviously the priority will be for Tottenham, and they can do anything. For example, selling him to Bayern Munich or to Juventus just because he had a good season on loan to Tottenham. So the priority will be for Tottenham, but not just mm -hmm. from Real Madrid, also from the player. He decided to to give his priority to Tottenham. He's grateful to Tottenham because they were really convinced to sign him. He had many approaches in the last years. He had approaches also from Chinese clubs, also from mm -hmm. other Premier League clubs, also from sometimes other Spanish clubs, but he always said, no, no, I want to stay, I want to stay. So when he understood that Tottenham were serious to sign him and Jose Mourinho wanted him and Daniel Levy wanted him and all Tottenham people wanted him, that's why he said, okay, my priority also for the future is for Tottenham. So next summer they will sit again and they will be ready to extend I don't know if long or if, it, if they will decide to sign on a permanent deal, Garbel. Brilliant. I mean, that, that, that's the, the news all Tottenham fans want to hear. It's, you know, uh, a lot of people are talking about perhaps a, a small club mentality uh, in the way Tottenham have gone about getting this deal done. And that's also something that's been mentioned with, with our signing of Sergio Regulon. And, you know, we know that there's been interest from, from Inter Milan for him this summer, you know, a team that Regulon played against in last season's Europa League final uh, and also Inter Milan in the Champions League again this season and Manchester United as well also interested in, in getting in Regulon, but what, what was it that made the player choose Spurs? It was another complicated deal, just because in this case, more than Inter, Inter were interested, but the player wanted to move to the Premier League. He was really close mm -hmm. to join Manchester United. The deal was really close to be completed. The player was convinced to join Manchester United before Tottenham joined the race, so he was ready to move to Manchester United. Then what's happened? That mm, Tottenham made an important bid, and they accepted to, to allow also the, the buyback option for, uh, for Real Madrid. They call it the mm -hmm. compra in Spanish football. And so they have the opportunity to, to sign the player back in two and in three years. And Manchester United always say they didn't want this close. They just accepted to, to sign the player on a permanent deal without any close. So Tottenham accepted just because it was the only option to sign Reguillon. So if you want Reguillon, mm -hmm. you know that in two or three years, Real Madrid can come back and sign the player. But remember, the decision, the final decision will always be of the player, not just of Real Madrid. So tomorrow morning, Real Madrid can come back to Tottenham and say, okay, I bring the Guillaume back to, to Real Madrid. They need to have the, the green light from the player. And mm -hmm. let's see, because Tottenham, in my opinion, are convinced that the player will switch with Premier League, will be happy to join Tottenham also in the future. And they hope that the player can stay for many and many years. We will see, but in my opinion, it, is, it was a, a really good deal because Sergio is fantastic left back. You saw mm -hmm. him also against the Manchester United at the start of this new chapter, but he's really fast, he's skillful, he has good crosses, he's really, he's really young. He's coming from, as you said, Sevilla playing the Europa League, winning the Europa League, from Real Madrid mentality, so he's a winning mentality. He's always ready to play in European football. So you are going with a fantastic left back, in my opinion, one of the best in the world. I would say he's crazy from Real Madrid, Losing Teo Hernandez, who is doing something fantastic here in Italy with the Milan, but mm -hmm. also with Reguillon, because okay, they have the buyback option, but in my opinion, they had to keep him because he's a fantastic player. But they decided like this, and good luck to them and good luck to Sergio because I love him and I hope to see him at best level with Tottenham. Yeah, no, like I say, it's it's the winning mentality that that seems to be kind of the, the priority with Tottenham's recruitment this summer. Of course, Gareth Bale has won uh, four Champions Leagues, a couple of domestic trophies, countless stuff at Real Madrid. Um, of course, we mentioned Regulon winning the Europa League last season. Even Pierre Emil Hoybier, who we brought in from uh, from Southampton, he's previously won the Bundesliga with Bayern Munich, and it's it's a refreshing sort of thing to see. But like on on Regulon, as you say, he's a very fast uh, player. I think he registered the second fastest speed in European football last yes. season. Um, but it's it's kind of an interesting way for Tottenham to to go for this that they're accepting this sort of buyback clause. Do you think Real Madrid will activate this in the future? And if so, do you think Regulon would want to move back to Spain? I don't know what Reguillon will decide, but because it would depend by what he will do with Tottenham. So if he will win something, if he will be happy with the team, if Mourinho will be still the manager, it depends by many things. So really, I don't know today what happens in two years. But I can tell you that Real Madrid has a plan to keep the player also for the future. If they say we only accept with the buyback clause and they say it to Manchester United, to Tottenham, to Inter, to Napoli, to all clubs, basket for, for Reguillon, that's why they are planning. They are really planning for Reguillon in the future. So they say today we have Marcelo at the end of his best period. We have also Mendy who is doing good, but is not the level of Marcelo. So they say today if we sign, if we keep Reguillon here, he's not playing, he's not a starter, he needs to play, he needs to go to top club as Tottenham. They hope that 
Stadio Reggiano is a Real Madrid fan, he's born in Real Madrid. So they hope that in the future the player will decide, okay, let's come back if Real Madrid will go back for him because you never know in football what happens. So you can't plan anything. So I think Tottenham did a good deal because they said, let's sign the player, we have the player, enjoy because we have a fantastic left back. If Real Madrid will pay, we get 10 million euro more than what we paid for, for Reggiano. And that's it. It will be a fantastic left back or a good deal also for the future. So let's see what happens. But Tottenham are really relaxed about it. They say we have a great left back today. We hope to keep him for the future. That's it. But many times it happens. You buy the player, for example, you buy Reguillon without buyback loss. And then in two years arrives Paris Saint Germain offer 50 million euro. You have to sell the player also without the close. So don't have mm -hmm. any fear about the close because it's just part of the transfer market. But enjoy the player because, as I said, he's one of the best left back in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, it's great to hear from so the Tottenham point of view that, that they are relaxed about the whole thing and to hear from you that he is one of the best in the world is, is of course, very uh, encouraging as well. Um, now, I want to get on to, to Tottenham's pursuit of a striker because that's kind of been the, the main thing us fans have been looking for in the last couple of years. And in the end, it was, of course, Carlos Vinicius from, from Benfica that we did get in, but there was a whole string of forwards we were linked to over the window. There was uh, Ollie Watkins, Callum Wilson and Troy Deeney from uh, domestic clubs in England. And aside from that, there was Arcadius Milik, uh, Andrea Bellotti, Pat Sandaka, Habib Diallo, Moussa Dembele. The list goes on. There, there were quite a few that we, that we were interested in signing. Uh, was Carlos Felicius our first choice striker? And what other strikers were we close to bringing in? Yes, the most close part of Vinicius obviously was signed was Arcadius Milik. He was close to join Tottenham because they had advanced talks. Also, before signing Vinicius, they were really close also with his agents. They were talking about a loan with buy option. He had to extend his contract with Napoli and then signing for Tottenham. So it was not so easy, the situation for Milik, but he was not the first option. So that's why Tottenham were trying, but didn't find an agreement. And they decided to go for Carlos Vinicius, who was a big opportunity, younger player. Uh, also, the situation of the injuries of Milik was a problem, you know, because you're going to sign a buyback option. Uh, by, um, by um, sorry, about another option um, for 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 Harry Kane, who else also had many injuries, and you're gonna sign a player like Milik, who also had many injuries here in Italy with Napoli in last years. So it was a problem. It was a problem, and that's why Tottenham said, "Okay, let's go for a player who is younger." Okay, we go for a player who's not probably today is not ready to be the best player of Tottenham, a top striker, but in the future it can be this kind of striker. So let's go for him. Mourinho was uh, absolutely convinced about the player. And, and that's why they decided to go for him. Also for Belotti, they were trying, but it was really impossible because they were proposing a loan with buy option. Imagine that Torino are Belotti and 10 players more because he is the captain, he's the leader. They refused 80 million euro from AC Milan like three years ago. So it's impossible to sell a player like Belotti for a simple loan or a loan with buy option. So they immediately said no. Dembele was nothing advanced. They had many opportunities. Also, Troy Dini was just an idea for a last minute, but was not the main option, obviously. And I love Troidini, yeah, but <laughs> it was just an option. So so in I think they did their they did well also to go to the younger to a young player, uh, future player. We had him in Italy also here in Napoli. He was not playing, but many people told me also in trainings he was so good. He was focused on, on football, not just thinking to other things and it is so important when you talk about young players, you know. Today they are thinking to many things, not just to football. He's really concentrated and focused on football. And so I think they did good. Yeah. Also, Milik was a good striker, but injuries are a problem. And Tottenham yeah. can't go to replace Harry Kane with a striker with many other injuries. Yeah, no, I think uh, in hindsight, all the Tottenham fans are kind of happy with the with the striker we brought in. His numbers last season, of course, in, in Portugal were, were exceptional. I think 37 goal contributions. He's a, a really yes. exciting to be bringing in. Uh, but the, one of the main things around Tottenham's transfer, and I suppose you can call it the, the saga with Inter Milan, uh, there was three players there with potential moves. And the first one is uh, Milan Skriniar. One that Tottenham fans were hoping we would see get over the line, but uh, I know you've said recently as well that Tottenham are, are expected to go back in, in January uh, to try and get the screen air deal over the line. Do you think there's any potential for us to, to get that one done? I think it won't be easy because, as I said, uh, Inter also also said, um, I'm not told that Tottenham is coming back, but Inter are waiting for Tottenham to come back in January. It's something different, but it's, it's just an Inter feeling. They expect Tottenham to be back for Minas Kriniar, but they say, we told to Tottenham board also on last days before the deadline day, immediately they said the deadline day for Skriniar there was on Saturday and not on Monday because they can't sell Milan Skriniar on last day without a replacement. So it was mm -hmm. really impossible to, to sign Milan Skriniar on the deadline day. But, but they said also to Tottenham board, we are going to sell Milan Skriniar just also generally just if you are going to pay 60 million euro. This is 50 million euro with 10 million euro add-ons. 
won't be easy, in my opinion, because in January it's complicated to bid for 50 million euro. But let's see, mm -hmm. because Tottenham, in my opinion, will decide not right now, but in November, in December, understanding what will happen with their defense. They have been good in the start of season, so we have to see what happens if they want to pay 50 million euro for a center back in January. But Inter are expecting a move, so let's see, mm -hmm. because in January it will be a bit different, in my opinion, than normal January transfer window. It will be really busy because many clubs were waiting this summer, you know, they had many problems also by financial part. Now in January they can plan something, they can try again for mm -hmm. top targets and not just for small players. So expect something important, I don't know if it's for Tottenham and for other clubs, but they expect some important moves also in January. Mm -hmm. I think from the Tottenham point of view, we know uh, Alistair Gold has uh, said that he does expect Tottenham to go back in from that side as well, so hopefully we will see some development on that. Um, but kind of the first we heard of this potential screenier move was with perhaps Tongi and Dombele going the other way. Um, apparently Tottenham may have offered a, a swap deal there. Uh, was there any ever any potential for that uh, swap deal to actually go ahead? Yes, because um, in this moment, I think, no, Inter always said they don't want any player involved in a swap deal with, with Screener on, on September, because on July they wanted Dombele, but the main problem was that Dombele who has important value for, for Tottenham, in particular more than for Mourinho, for Tottenham board, for Daniel Levy. Daniel Levy wants 60 million euros from Dombele. So he was saying, okay, let's do the swap deal, but with the same value, with no money involved. And Inter said, no, for us, Dombele is around 40 million euros. We want 20 million euros and Dombele to sell Skriniar. So it was an enormous distance to sell the player and it was really complicated. So I don't expect Nobele to be involved. Also because Antonio Conte immediately after said, okay, if they ask 60, 60 million euro on the coronavirus summer for Nobele, let's gonna sign Arturo Vidal for free. Because I know Vidal, I had him at Juventus, that's what Conte said to the board, and they signed Vidal for free from Barcelona. They saved 60 million euro, and that's why, that's why I don't expect any move for a swap deal for screening in January. Tottenham were trying also to offer other players, for example, Juan Foyt, before joining Villarreal, was offered to, to Inter, but they were not convinced, they were not looking at this kind of centre back. So I'm not expecting any swap deal for, for Skriniar. If Tottenham will pay, they will get the player. If they don't, the player will stay at Inter. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the third player that uh, could potentially have been moved between the two clubs was Christian Eriksen. Uh, you know, Tottenham did inquire for him um, earlier in the summer. Do you think, again, was there any ever, uh, ever any potential for that move to actually happen this summer? Yes, it was, it was a possibility. It was just a talk, you know, when two top apps like Inter and Tottenham, they have good relationship because they did many deals on, on last year's, for example, Ericsson and just did. They had many meetings also last summer. So they were talking about many players. Also, two years ago, Inter wanted Sissoko from, from Tottenham. Also, La Mela was always in Inter radar. So they had many talks about many players. And, and about Ericsson this summer, it was an inquiry just to understand if there was the possibility of a loan for, from Christian Ericsson back to Tottenham because mm -hmm. he had difficult months here in Italy. He's not playing, he's not a starter with Conte. So here in Italy, we were expecting to see, we was to see also at the best level of, of Christian Ericsson. And he's not playing, he's on the bench like week by week. So it's a complicated situation with Inter. But Inter decided we are not going to, to loan him out on this summer. So many clubs asked also Chelsea, Bayern, Munich, many clubs asked about the situation of Ericsson, but on loan, and Inter would never sell him alone. So that's why also Tottenham understood that the situation was impossible to sign uh, Christian Eriksen on loan this summer. And I think also in January, they won't loan him out. If they will sell him, it will be a permanent deal, yes. Mm -hmm. And look, th this summer isn't the first one Tottenham have tried to get some uh, big deals over the line from Italy. Uh, kind of the big one for Tottenham last season, last summer was Paolo Dybala. And we know that Saga, of course, rumbled on till, till a transfer deadline day until it eventually fell apart. We've heard so many different reasons for why that, uh, that one didn't go ahead. But I suppose just what the Tottenham fans want to know is uh, why Dybala isn't wearing a Tottenham jersey. Because just you mean in the past or for the future? You mean uh, in, in the past, I suppose. No, oh, in the in, for the future, it is, is really difficult. So, for the past, I see that mm, it was a decision by Paolo Dybala himself because Juventus and Tottenham were negotiating. They had a meeting directly in, in London between Juventus director Fabio Paratici and Tottenham board. They found an agreement, so it was part because of the situation of his image rights because he had an important amount for image rights with Juventus and. 
Tottenham wanted, didn't want to pay this, this amount to, to Paolo Dybala, but it was also his decision. He said, I want to stay at Juventus. It's not about Manchester United, Tottenham, Real Madrid, Barcelona. I want to stay at Juventus. He's happy at Juventus. He has his family here, his girlfriend here, his life here. He's so happy playing in Italy. He's so happy with Juventus because he's a star. He has a fantastic relationship with fans. He's so young. He's still so young. So what he said is, I want to stay here. I want to play for Juventus. And then in my future, I will see. But I think Dybala... In the future, he's looking to move for a Spanish club over an English club because of his style of football. So if I imagine, this is my opinion, what I feel when I see Dybala playing, I see him perfect for Spanish club, Barcelona, Real Madrid, more than English club because he's a classy player. He's not so fast, you know, he has not the rhythm of the Premier League, but obviously Tottenham were interested. They were really, really close to sign him. Then the deal collapsed because of Paulo himself. So... Tottenham did everything they can to sign Paulo Dybala, but when the players say no, you can you can do anything. Yeah, and uh, another player we came close to signing uh, last last summer was of course Bruno Fernandes from Sporting Lisbon, and it seems as though this one was uh, kind of a bit more towards the I suppose the, the Tottenham board side of things. It was it was another deal that fell through, some more disappointment for Tottenham. Uh, with this window last year, was it Tottenham's board that was kind of letting us down? And of course, we made some big signings with in Dombele and Celso. But were there some other deals there that we could have got done if it wasn't for uh, the board kind of falling away in the last moments? No, I have to be honest. I would say no. I, I think it's not a fault for the for the board. You have to imagine that when you want, want to sign players like Bruno, like Paolo Dybala, these kind of players, is really difficult today because transfer market has changed. So you can't sign any player of this level in two weeks, in one month. You have to prepare yourself. You have to talk with the agent. You have to talk, to talk with the player. You have to talk with the club. You have to talk with the intermediary because many times the agent is not the same person of the intermediary. So you have many people involved in the deal. It's really complicated. You have to spend a lot of money for signing this kind of player because we always talk about fee for between the two clubs. But we have to understand that the players also take money when the sign the contract. You also tend to, to consider also about the agent's fee who are really important if you do a deal for 100 million euro, for example, Havertz to Chelsea, 100 million euro, I don't include it, but they had to pay an important agent's fee also. So it was the same for Sancho. So when you want to sign this kind of players, it's really complicated today, more than one year ago, one year ago, just because of the situation of the virus. So mm-hmm. I say it's a complicated moment for football and for transfer market to sign this kind of players. So I'm not going to say it's, it's a fault for Tottenham board because they are doing a good work. Now they're going to try to have also the right balance with Mourinho, between Mourinho, between Daniel Levy, between Mourinho people and Raj. So let's see what will happen also next summer. But at the moment, I think they are happy with what they are doing and I think they are doing a good work because signing Gary Bale, Sergio Reguillon, as you said, also Hoiberg, Maldorti and many other players, keeping your top players, for example, obviously mm-hmm. Harry Kane, but many others, was not so easy, not selling any top players. So congrats to them. Yeah, uh, was there any um, was there any deals over the summer, uh, uh, incomings or departures at Tottenham that we haven't heard about in the in the media yet that that could actually have happened? Well, I think no. I think no. I to be honest, uh, Tottenham have many links and rumors. So so many times rumors about Tottenham also, also we have on on public also. So I think no. I also see many rumors also in the last days, but it's always rumors about Nicolò Zaniolo for Tottenham. But mm. apart of his injury. I think it's really difficult just because Roma make a value around 60 million euro for Zaniolo, so it's really complicated to sign him. But um, you had a lot of rumors, but um, nothing secret in my opinion. So I'm thinking about it, but I would say no, nothing top secret was going on and, and didn't happen. Okay, so that's good to hear because we're always, you know, we could hear a few years later these, these deals that kind of nearly got over the line that could be d- disappointing, but at least uh, the business we had set out to do this summer for the, for the main part, we did get it done. And I suppose one player of the Tottenham fans uh, where the, the opinion was split a bit in terms of potential departure uh, this, this summer was Deli Ali. And again, we're, we're all being told it was uh, two loan bids for PSG rejected. Uh, we're hearing varying reports about who actually wanted Ali to leave the club and who wanted him to stay. Um, I suppose, did Jose Mourinho want him out? 
Yes, I think it was a complicated situation. It was one of the players between Mourinho and the board with different considerations. It's not just Mourinho doesn't like Ali, but he wants more from Dele Ali. It's not just on the pitch, also on training. He wants more from him. That's why the board were talking also with his agents, because his agents were offering players to many clubs, to Real Madrid, when they were talking about the situation of Garibaldi. But Real Madrid said, no, we don't want to sign any player this summer. So they said no to Dele Ali. Paris Saint-Germain were in talks with the agents, but they never found an agreement also because they didn't want a simple loan. They wanted also a buyback option to, to a buy option to, to sign the player in the future and not to just having him on loan. So it was also not easy with Paris Saint-Germain. I think Jose wants more from, from Dele Alli. That's the problem. He wants more on training. So it's up to the player right now. If he won't change his attitude also during training, it will be complicated. And I expect him also in January to be also in talks with many other clubs. But obviously, Tottenham, and you know Dan and Levy better than me, but Tottenham, when they sell some players, they want their money. That's why Inter are asking 60 million euros for Skriniar, because they say, when we wanted Christian Eriksen with six month contract left, you asked us 20 million euros, and we had like a fight for one month trying to offer 15, 15, like 16, 17, and you also wanted, always wanted 20 million euros. So now it's the same for us for Skriniar. So that's why Daniel Levy always say he wants his value for the, his players, and the same in the situation of the Alli. That's uh, the, the negotiating genius of Levy coming back to bite him there with Inter kind of uh, using <laughs> his own tactics against him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And look, it, it's been outside of Tottenham as well. It's been a, a very strange window. It's been been called the Corona window. You know, we've seen kind of a, a lot of big deals not go through. You know, uh, Paul Pogba to Juventus. I think you said it was one that you think would have happened without the virus this window. We've seen uh, Barcelona fail to get deals over the line for, for Memphis to play in Eric Garcia. We've seen United unable to get Sancho and, and Real Madrid for the first time in 40 years uh, failing to sign a player in the summer window. But on the other side of things, we're looking at teams in the Premier League like Wolves and Aston Villa. They wouldn't be known as, as financial powerhouses, I suppose, both spending upwards of £70 million. Uh, Leeds spent over £90 million. And then, of course, Chelsea out way in front spending over £200 million. Have you been, have you been surprised by the way uh, this, this pandemic has kind of affected teams differently? Yes, yes. And to be honest, I was surprised more than from Leeds because they had the good ownership. So they were new in the Premier League. So they were needing to, to invest to have a competitive team in the Premier League with, with Marcelo Bielsa. But I was really surprised by Chelsea, to be honest. I was expecting Chelsea to have a good window with top players, OK? But they signed like many top players. I was not expecting, for example, others. I said, OK, they signed Ziyech, they signed Werner. So when they told me, OK, they're going to sign also Kai Avers, I was saying, wow, I was not expecting it. And it mm. was really surprising. And then they signed Chilwell, and then they signed Edward Mendy, and then they signed Thiago Silva. So it was really crazy. But you can understand it because they had two difficult years on transfer market. They were blocked, so mm. they can have an important move. And that's why they got in this summer all in to sign many players on, on last window. So it was part of the game, in my opinion. And congrats to Chelsea, because I was not expecting after the virus to go and sign so many top players on the same summer. Yeah, I think uh, everyone has been looking at it with, a, with an element of surprise with how much they, money they've managed to invest. But I think, look, I may have a, a biased opinion myself, but I think in terms of value for money, I think Tottenham have had um, an exceptional window. Of course, Dalen on loan, Regalon for uh, a relatively cheap fee, which of course they can make profit from and the other players as well coming in uh, for, for pretty low prices. How, how would you raise Tottenham's transfer business this summer? I would say it was a good summer, absolutely a good summer for Tottenham. So I'd say, as we say, during the virus was really complicated to complete deals, to finalize deals, obviously, because you also have a problem of timing. It's not just a matter of money, but also a problem of timing when you want to sign new players during this crazy period. But in my opinion, they had a really good window. As I said, they didn't solve any top player. They were keeping Harry Kane. We had many rumors, you remember, in February, in March, Harry Kane is moving on, he's going to another club. Mm -hmm. It was not true, and they, they, they keep Harry Kane, and they are so happy with Harry Kane. So they, they are not selling anyone. They are signing good players. As I said, Reguillon, one of the best left back in the world. Having Gareth Bale is something special for the club, more than for, for any other club. To have Gareth Bale for Tottenham is something really special. And I love this kind of stories also in the transfer market. So it was a really good deal, also on loan. So you have no risk is a fantastic deal, in my opinion. And they signed Vinicius, who, as you said, is a really good young player. Mato Erti is a really good right back. So in my opinion, they did something really good this summer. Congrats to Tottenham. It won't be easy because in this moment in Premier League, you have also other clubs, for example, Everton, are having a really good moment with a good manager. So it's really difficult in Premier League to arrive between the first four clubs. But... Good luck to them because, in my opinion, they did a really good, good work. 
yeah, I think th thankfully that is the, the the general opinion. I suppose we have had a good window. It's not something yeah. that um, you, you'd often hear from Tottenham fans being quite content, and it was a relaxed deadline day, which is a, yes. a great experience for Tottenham fans. But uh, I suppose the last thing I want to ask you, what the all fans will, will want to know from you, is uh, do you think Tottenham can can fight for the Premier League this season? I think yes, but won't be easy. In my opinion, uh, they are they they had to do like a miracle to win the Premier League. I have to be honest. I think yes, they will fight but won't really be easy. I love Mourinho, consider I live in Italy, so Mourinho here in Italy is like God for what he did for Inter, and I really love him. I always think that Mourinho can do anything possible or impossible, because winning the three player treble here with Inter was something really unexpected. But this season is complicated because you have Manchester City, you have Liverpool, in my opinion, these two clubs are another liver in this moment, and it won't be easy, really, it won't be easy, but they will fight. I think, yes, they will try, they will fight. We have also to see what happens with European football this summer mm -hmm. because it will change also the balance for these clubs because playing every three days with the virus, with players having the virus, it can change also. You can see what's happening with, with top players having the virus. Also, Cristiano Ronaldo here in Italy right now, that it can change your season if you have a top match and you don't have your key player in the top match. So pay attention also to the details because it's a crazy year and during the crazy years, anything can happen. But I would say it's complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, look, the, the feeling around Tottenham is that we can get something over the line. So here, something similar for you is, of course, uh, very encouraging. Uh, Fabrizio, thank you very, very much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. And again, as I'm sure all the fans will say, thank you so much for, for your coverage over the over the various transfer windows. Thank you. I have to say thank you because it's fantastic for me to, to talk always with, with fans, with Tottenham fans and with football fans in general. And really, I have to say thank you and it was a pleasure to be with you and see you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Richard, for you. See you.